subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 13th of January. Indian PM Modi holds review meetings with chief ministers as Omicron cases spike. Taliban seeks greater role in distribution of foreign aid amid crisis in Afghanistan. And massive outrage in Gilgit, Baltistan due to food shortage and black marketing. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday held a virtual meeting with Chief Ministers to review the COVID-19 situation in the country amid a rapid surge in cases of the new Omicron variant. India recorded more than 247,000 coronavirus cases on Thursday, its biggest day single-day rise since last May. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday held a virtual meeting with chief ministers to review the COVID-19 situation in the country amid an exponential surge in Omicron cases. India recorded more than 247,000 coronavirus cases on Thursday, taking the infections tally to 36.32 million. The Prime Minister told the meeting that there is a need to ensure financial activities are not affected. However, focus on local containment and testing should be ensured. The sooner the precautionary doses are applied is better, he said. He also urged citizens not to panic due to the spike, but to remain alert and follow all guidelines. Logon ki aur prashasan ki alertness kahi se bhi kam na pade. Pahle kendra aur rajya sarkaro ne jis tarah preemptive, proactive or collective approach of nahi hai. Vahi is samay ki jeet ka mantra hai. India earlier this week began administering COVID-19 vaccine boosters to frontline workers and vulnerable elderly people amid the Omicron threat. The health ministry has said only 5 to 10 percent of the infected have sought hospitalization compared with 20 to 23 percent during the Delta-driven last wave that peaked in May. Britain and India formally launched a free trade agreement talks in New Delhi on Thursday with the aim of wrapping up a deal by the end of the year that could boost annual bilateral trade by billions of pounds. Britain's Trade Minister Anne-Marie Trevelyan and her Indian counterpart Piyush Goyal on Thursday formally launched free trade agreement talks in New Delhi on Thursday with the aim of wrapping up a deal by the end of the year that could boost annual bilateral trade by billions of pounds. The minister said they would also launch a limited scope interim trade agreement in the next few months before finalising the free trade deal. Britain said the deal could almost double British exports to India and by 2035 boost total trade by £28 billion or £38 billion per year. Total trade in 2019 was worth £23 billion according to British statistics. Through our commitment to a new and transformational comprehensive strategic partnership and the 2030 roadmap for future UK-India relations, we aim to double trade between our countries by the end of this decade, supporting jobs, businesses and communities in both our countries. Ministers want to tap into the wealth of India's middle classes and their appetite for premium British products like Scotch whisky. They also hope India can become a big customer of its green technology industry and that existing service sector trade routes can be strengthened. And in news from Afghanistan, the Taliban administration in Afghanistan has proposed a joint body of its officials and international representatives to coordinate billions of dollars in planned aid. This comes as the United Nations this week asked donors for 4.4 billion US dollars for Afghanistan as the country faces an unfolding humanitarian crisis. 
The Taliban administration that seized control of Afghanistan proposed a joint body on Wednesday of its officials and international representatives to coordinate billions of dollars in planned aid. It was not clear, however, whether the United Nations and foreign governments would back any such agreement as it would constitute a stark increase in access to international funding by the Taliban, which has been sidelined due to sanctions. An abrupt withdrawal of foreign aid last year after the Taliban's victory in August left Afghanistan's fragile economy on the brink of collapse, with food prices rising rapidly and causing widespread hunger. Although this has since eased after exemptions were passed by the UN and Washington in December. Hadap az ejad in komite mushtarak hamahangi ba sath ali tashil rawand komak hai bashari buda ta bashad ki komak hai bashar dostane jami jahani ba shakl muassir an ba niyazmandan brasad. ما خواستار آغاز فعالیت های انکشافی سایر مؤسسات به شمول بانک جهانی در افغانستان هستیم و باور ما به این است که کمک های انکشافی کافی کمک های بشر دوستانه کافی نیست و بدیل بسیار خوب رشد فعالیت اقتصادی و کمک های انکشافی است. Earlier on Tuesday, the United Nations asked donors for 4.4 billion dollars in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan in 2022. and the White House announced it would donate an extra $308 million. Foreign governments facing warnings that millions could starve as the economic crisis intensifies are ramping up humanitarian aid, but are keen for it to remain free from government interference. Moving on, a massive protest was held at Gilgit, Baltistan recently over shortage of food supply in the illegally occupied region and black marketing amid harsh winter. The protesters blame the Pakistan government has been denying them the wheat quota and local officials are involved in corruption. A massive protest was held recently in Gilgit, Baldistan over acute shortage of food supply and rampant black marketing amid harsh winters in the illegally occupied region. The protesters blog wrote as they complained about a severe shortage of wheat flour. They blamed the Pakistan government for denying from the economic and social rights as they are forced to buy basic food items at higher prices amid rising inflation. They said that they will continue their agitation until the wheat quota is restored. Locals have long blamed that the Pakistani establishment has failed to provide even the basic necessities of life to the people of Gilgit, Baldistan. They accuse Islamabad has kept the region backward and underdeveloped for the past 70 years of its illegal occupation. And moving on to news from Nepal, as the Nepal government has made COVID vaccination mandatory to access public services from January 17th, people have started forming long serpentine queues at hospitals to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Earlier this week, authorities restricted large public gatherings and closed schools to curb the virus spread. As the Nepal government has made COVID vaccination mandatory to access public services from January 17, people have started forming long serpentine queues at hospitals to get vaccinated as soon as possible. A large number of people thronged vaccination centres even before scheduled time on Wednesday to get jabbed as the Himalayan nation witnesses a rapid surge in infections. As of Thursday, 11.3 million people or 37.3% of the population had been fully vaccinated in the country, reports suggested. The Himalayan nation has reported 841,297 confirmed COVID-19 cases, 
with 11610 deaths so far since the pandemic began earlier this week authorities restricted large public gatherings and closed schools to curb the virus spread and India's Jammu and Kashmir is known globally for the production of the best quality spices. While the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted various sectors, the spices industry has continued to grow and has been providing employment opportunities to scores of people in the Union Territory. India's Jammu and Kashmir is known in the world for producing saffron and spices. Realizing its potential, a firm of the agro foods and spices industry in Srinagar city has been producing varieties of spices over the years. Amid vast unemployment amid the pandemic, this spice firm is providing employment opportunities for the people of the Union Territory. More than 70 people are employed in this farm. सारे मसाले जो हम बना रहे हैं कुछ डिफरेंट दे रहे हैं और ऑल ओवर इंडिया में अल्लाह ताला के फजल करम से मशहूर हो रही डिमांड आ रही है इन मतलब बाहर भी जो आउट ऑफ कंट्री जैसे मलेशिया अमेरिका में कुछ लोगों ने हमारे प्रोडक्ट एज अ सुपरवाइजर मुझे काम करना बहुत अच्छा लगा और मुझे लगता है कि इस तरह की कंपनीज में गर्ल को काम करना बहुत अच्छा है करना चाहिए एज अ एम्प्लॉयमेंट हम यहां पकड़ते बॉयज को भी गर्ल्स को भी Kashmiri Valley produces and grows one of the most expensive spices in India. As the consumption of spices is high in the valley, the firm aims to generate more employment and boost the local economy. Festive spirit engulfed India's northeastern Assam state on Thursday as locals geared up to celebrate Mark Bihu, the traditional harvest festival. Women make traditional delicacies and also perform folk dance to mark the festival, which showcases India's diversity in culture and tradition. People in India's northeastern Assam state were seen in the festive spirit on Thursday as they performed their folk dance a day ahead of Mark Bihu, the traditional harvest festival. The festival is dedicated to Hindu fire god Agni and is observed in the month of Mark that falls in January. People also throng special markets to buy items to prepare traditional delicacies, which the entire family feasts on. Mark Bihu is one of the biggest festivals in Assam and is celebrated with great fanfare by the locals. So, if you see the surroundings, you will see the various uh, shops offering their good food, home-made food, home-prepared food, and they have their unique taste all over the uh, Assam. So, in this occasion, we are celebrating this Bhukali Bihu to, to, to welcome the a god of food. In the morning of Bihu, people burn meji, a tall structure of straw and bamboo, and also pray in front of it. Mark Bihu is one of those festivals that showcase India's diversity in culture and tradition. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian PM Modi holds review meetings with chief ministers as Omicron cases spike. Taliban seeks greater role in distribution of foreign aid amid crisis in Afghanistan. And massive outrage in Gilgit, Baltistan due to food shortage and black marketing. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.